Shagun Fatuma, good morning. Mufelola, I like Becky, good morning. Be me or Ekoya, good morning. Be de me, morning. Ngoya Sharis, good morning. Yomi Jekede, good morning. Nosa Flevo, Amonike, Comfy, Ikifa, Mary Dulangon. Lola Shurunke, you are back at home. Welcome back. Welcome back. Gladys Daniel, Rochelle White, Hernita Nangins, Prince Dominic, Gladys Daniel, Nana She, Charles Uche, Matthias, Michael Lopez. Diane Engel, T.Y. Moore, Emanuela Magada, Shum Mikainde, Justina, Noel Okushuku, Wilson Araromi, Anastasia, Felix. Well, thank you for coming today. Let's go ahead and share the link as usual. Let's go ahead and share the link. Uh, share, share the, press the uh, share button. You, you have the share button under your video. Let's go ahead and press it. And uh, we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go. So, let's press that button and let's get going well we we'll keep on talking about the difference between men and women so today that topic continues why we must value our differences I'm sure we have been learning a lot this week. Why we must value our differences, yep. All right, here we go. So what are the other differences between men and women? The one I would like to deal with today is the fact that women sometimes <laughs> feel their husbands don't understand what's going on, which might be true because I already told you uh, how women process more information and uh, how women have a lot of things going on for them that w men don't even have an idea of. So as a result, the ladies like to correct their men by just uh, trying to correct them or by publicly rebuking them or correcting them, or, uh, <laughs> trying to uh, make them to understand what's going on. Now, men cannot stand that. And actually, men and women cannot stand that. 
Uh, men don't like to be taught by their wives. Men don't like to be rebuked, um, to be chastised by their wives, especially publicly. Men cannot stand public reproach. And women too. Women also cannot stand public, re public reproach. But men are people of ego. When it comes to men, there is a lot of ego going on, a lot of pride, a lot of ego. So uh, ladies should be careful not to, <laughs> ladies must be careful not to talk anyhow to their, to their spouses, to their husbands, because husbands get irritated, they get angry, and that might be one of the greatest reasons for conflict in the family because the men feel the ladies don't respect them. And the greatest need of the man in the family is actually respect. There is nothing a man desires more than respect. Uh, So, I would like to just advise the ladies to be much more tactful in trying to point out to the men what they are doing wrong. Yes, uh, there are a lot of things that men might be doing wrong. There are a lot of things that they might not be seeing. But don't try to teach them. Always try to talk to the men as a suggestion. Um, just, if you need to correct him, try to let him know softly that you might not like what is going on. Uh, and that you should try to consider your opinion or try to reconsider um, his opinion or his attitude towards the, that question or the other. Uh, so, you know, women must refrain from trying to rebuke or trying to correct or trying to teach their men. Otherwise, they get irritated. It is another thing if it's another person that is teaching them or telling them those things, somebody that is not uh, under them, as they will say, someone that is not their wife. But it's just like a daughter or a son trying to teach the father. They think that they are people on, in authority, so they, don't, they are not open to you teaching them. You could point out to them what is wrong, uh, but you don't go ahead outrightly and begin to, uh, to lecture them. But the same thing is true of women. Uh, women also don't like it when they are rebuked. Women also don't like it when they are rebuked. So uh, it is very important that we we'll learn to value each other. We need to learn to value each other in the sense that um, men too should not be looking at a girl or at a lady as a school girl. Somebody that needs to be corrected, somebody that needs to be taught, someone that needs to be uh, reprimanded. And uh, <clears throat> I see that T.Y. here is saying did I say wife is under the husband or under them? Well, you know, I know my philosophy personally is that man and woman are colleagues. They are, they are partners. They are equal. Uh, but still, since the general consensus and the Bible says that the husband is the head, in the mind of the man, he is seeing himself as the head. And uh, since ego plays a very big role in the life of the man, 
<laughs> that is the way they look at the whole thing. I think that word under them might be the wrong choice of word, right? Uh, but still, that is from the viewpoint of most men. Uh, they don't want to listen to their wives because they're thinking, even though they are partners, they know that, but they are thinking she should just suggest. I think the main point here is that the lady should just speak like a suggestion or contribution or an idea rather than, um, you know, reprimanding or teaching or lecturing or something like that. But like I said, even the women, the women as well, don't like to uh, be reprimanded, especially publicly. Uh, is damaging to her. Now, that is one difference. Just like the men have ego and they don't want to be corrected or spoken to anyhow by their wives. Let me tell you what men should not do concerning a woman as well. What is also more damaging to the woman. Okay, correction is one thing, but I think even the men should be try to be careful when they are talking to the woman. They, you know, it's a girl also is not a school girl. You shouldn't sit your wife down and be trying to correct her and trying to talk to her like a schoolgirl. But what is more damaging to a woman that a man should be careful about is that we should, men should be careful about talking to the lady about her failures and especially about her physical weaknesses. Uh, to be talking to a lady about her physical weaknesses is could be very destructive to the lady. For example, if you co if you come home and you are telling your wife, oh, it's that like you have put on weight, or, or you need to go and lose weight, or oh, or my wife, you need to go to the gym, or oh, you got some fat in there, or you got some fat in your stomach or something. You know, those th things are so destructive to the woman that she would think it would have been better for her not to be married to you than for you to be talking to her like that. Even if she herself, sometimes men say, but she herself is the one saying it now. She herself is the one saying she has put on weight. And I only confirm, yes, but even when a woman is coming to you to tell you that she has put on weight, or that she's not looking beautiful, or that she doesn't look nice, or that she doesn't like how she looks. She's not expecting you to come and confirm that, that yes, she has put on weight. If a woman comes to tell you she, that she's concerned about her look and she's not beautiful, you, you as a man, you are expected to, you know, to she, what she's actually looking for is your support. What she's actually looking for is for you to come out and tell her, no, 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 you are okay, you look great, or you are beautiful, nothing. I, I even like it better the way you look now than, than, uh, than, than before, and, you know, nothing has changed. You, she is actually looking for comfort. She is actually looking for understanding. She is actually looking for support. But when you come and tell her, yes, you have lost weight, so when you come and tell her, yes, it's true, you have lost weight, you have, uh, you know, you you are, you have, you have gained weight, or you are looking so fat, or you are looking so ugly, or yes, it's true, you don't look nice, you don't look beautiful. All those things are very destructive to a woman. All those things are very destructive. Just like it is destructive to a man, uh, when we tell, I mean, when women tell us that, um, you know, we're doing something wrong and the woman is telling us that in public or before our friends, it is so also it is destructive to a woman for a man or especially the husband to be telling her of how she's not looking right or she's not dressing right or how, you know, 
you know, fat she has become or how ugly she has become. Uh, you know, it is, uh, it is very destructive to the woman. As a matter of fact, <laughs> even when a woman is okay and everything is okay with her, and she's okay in uh, physically, she's okay, and yeah, and she, you know everything is, seems to be okay. Even then, a lady, she's so fragile in her feelings and in her, and she's so insecure actually, naturally so insecure that she needs your support all the time. She's looking forward to you to support her. She's looking forward to you to give out some word of encouragement, some compliment. A lady is always looking for support, compliment, understanding, comfort, encouragement from the man. So instead of that, if you begin to tell her that she's not beautiful or you begin to tell her uh, how she has added weight or how she's no more as beautiful as she, you met her or how her body is not like that, that is like killing the lady. That is like killing the lady. So, so it is, okay, joy he say, but that is flattering, Pastor. He rather tell me how I look than me think I'm okay when I'm not. Well, you know, every lady knows how she is. Every lady knows the true picture of her health and of her look better than any man. There is no man that will know better the body of a lady than, us, than her herself. In fact, she is not seeing, he is not even seeing half of what she is seeing. She is seeing herself more than he is seeing her. So is it flattering? Okay, let us talk about what is flattering. Flattering is when you are deceiving somebody with the intention of getting something from her or of getting, you know, making her to do something or get something from her to your own gain or profit. But this is not flattering in that sense. This is encouragement. This is support. So if I tell all the men now to begin to go and tell their wives the truth, and be, so to say truth, you will begin, even if I tell Joy Akanonu now, if I, begin, if I tell your husband now to go and be telling you the truth, you will, I, I'm, af, I'm afraid you will almost feel like going to commit suicide because there are so many truths that he knows about you that he's not telling you just because he's trying to protect you if he begins to tell you some of the, the so-called truth about you, you will not even know in your whole life that a man could be thinking such things about you. Uh, about you. About you. You will be. You will be. Uh, you, you will be shocked. You. <laughs> I mean, women have committed suicide just because of this kind of truth that we are talking about. That. Uh, uh, that. You know, you should go and tell you the truth. So I know what I'm talking about when I'm saying that it is better for the man to support the woman. It is better for uh, him to be there for her. It is one of the ways to give a woman covering. It is one of the ways to give a woman support, moral support. It is one of the ways uh, to, you know, to be there for her. And to tell her that no matter what, I will keep on loving you. And that is the vow that was given uh, when we, we are at the altar. And the vow is, the vow is uh, for better and for worse. So it doesn't matter how much kilogram you put on. It doesn't matter how much you have lost weight. Uh, for better, for worse means, you know, I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to value you. And you are always going to be precious to me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when we express our confidence and support uh, for a woman like that, it's very, very comforting to her. Okay, Daniel says, uh, I think all women are not the same because I don't see myself going out with my man in public and insulting him. But I have seen a lot of women do that. And men too, I think they are not all the same. 
uh, Nena, she is a pastor. I think I can imagine, I can manage knowing the truth about me. I promise the more truth I know, the better. I feel because truth is real at all time and sets one free, the Bible says. Uh, the court is, says it is better to insinuate to your wife. You care as a men are to use tact in pointing uh, out their wives' faults. Yes, wisdom. They need more affirmation. The women need more affirmation, comfort, um, and a supportive solution than negative comments. Yes, negative comments uh, could destroy a woman. I mean, I've seen women that have, or I've heard of women that have gone to commit suicide just because of negative comments. Okay, T.Y. is saying, very demoralizing when a guy told his wife that when when she was Talking in church, the fat on her arms were wobbling. Horrible. She started taking those arm, armful tablets and now dealing with serious medical issues. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be very destructive. Patricia Agbino said, Most men think a woman should not be heard. If a man sp speaks a mind, if a woman speaks a mind, she is termed as being forward and uncontrollable. Uh, they will call from outside to watch a TV program where way issue is being discussed. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, Nena says, I think men never see the lady's word as advice or suggestion because they have their ego and see us uh, and see us as wanting to correct or direct them always on the always on the defensive. Well, that's why the ladies must learn to be more tactful in that. Okay, so, uh, you know, like, that's my opinion. Don't tell your wife, don't kill your wife with negative comments. Uh, don't, you know, be telling her all the negative things in her. And women are already living in negative. Uh, women are already self-critical. Women already, you know, are not just self-critical. Uh, they are already self-destructive with self-criticism. And I've shown you, uh, I think I've shown you the pictures before. Let me show it again. Of how men and women look at themselves in the mirror. So can you see the picture there? The lady is very, quite slim. You see the lady? She's actually slim. But when she looks at the mirror, when she looks at the mirror, see what she's saying. She's really not as big as that in the physical. She's rather okay. But because of the negative nature of the woman and because of the need of the woman to be protected, to be covered, and to be supported. You know, she is seeing negative all by herself already. This explains the reason why I say men shouldn't be talking negative about their wives, especially about their physical look. It is very destructive to a woman. 
So, and you know, I'm surprised that some women are saying, let him tell me, I want the truth. There are some truths that are very destructive, you know, and, you know, I know what I'm talking about because I've been a pastor for um, close to 30 years now. And, and, uh, and, and I, I've been meeting and dealing with issues about women, men and women for all these years in dealing with thousands of thousands of cases. And I know that women are naturally negative about themselves already. This photograph here tells the whole picture. It tells the whole picture. The women are already negative. So if you now begin to tell her your arms are too fat, your legs are too fat, your backside is too fat, and all that, you know, you don't know. It's not just the physical information she got. She's getting more, you know, destructive emotional information as a result. But the man is okay. He's even seeing himself better than he is in, in, in real life. You see the difference? The man does... It's not as destructive for the man to, you know, the way he's seen. He's seeing himself as even better in the picture than, than how he is in the real sense. No man will ever say he's ugly. He's, he thinks he's okay. But for the woman, that could be very, very destructive. So I hope, I hope the photograph, <laughs> I hope the photograph will, will help pass my message across. Okay, for example, Nkiru Ojibadu is saying here, yes, yeah, so I have three more kilograms to lose to the end of the year. Now, the man doesn't know that. Can you imagine a husband now going to tell her, oh, you are fat. But the husband doesn't know how many kilograms she's, plan she's planning to lose. We the husband doesn't know the, de the, the details that she already knows about herself. So if you are going to tell her she's fat, she already knew this before you. You know, you should rather say it in a fragile way and come to tell her that, okay, you are doing a good job. You have already lost, lost a good number of weight. Wow, I, I admire you. You know, come like, like a compliment. Come from the positive side. Don't come from the negative side. Women are fragile and we should treat them as such. We should treat them as very fragile. So, uh, <laughs> Omonike said, yes, this is true. I don't want anyone whatsoever to come and tell me that I'm getting fat. <laughs> Not to talk of my man. <laughs> because I naturally get fat when I'm thinking, I'm worried. I tend to eat more, but I always caution myself. So, I don't need anyone to tell me. You are right, Pastor Sunday. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know, just, just telling you from my experience. Then another thing that we, we, uh, that we need to know is that uh, women are struggling with so many questions apart from our own negative things that we are bringing to them. Women are already so filled with so many issues on their own. And like I said, life, this is how life is to a woman compared to a man on a daily basis. This is how real life is to, to a woman. You see, a woman is facing already incredible obstacles. This is how everyday life is. You see this thing in her leg? She's having the weight in her leg, you see? She's already, you know, already tangled down with so many issues. See this? See it? Man doesn't feel like that at all. Man doesn't feel like that. And see all the things she has to escape on a daily basis. She wakes up in the morning, she's thinking about, she wakes up in the morning, she's thinking about her body. This one are the, uh, are the inhibitions she's having in her own body. T you know, things she has to deal with, uh, emotions, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, hormones, uh, body changes, and uh, and other things that, 
and other things that she needs to deal with. These are things that are in her. Then outside her, there are other things, other challenges like her children, like her home, like her husband, like her work, like, her, you know, food, washing, cleaning, all kind of things a woman wakes up to deal with already. All of them are difficulties. All of them are problems. All of them are challenges. But a man is thinking that he's having problems. Oh, a man is always thinking that he's the one that is having challenges. And the challenge of the man is just work and sex. You know, he's just having two A man doesn't have any problem, but he's seeing himself as if he's having the greatest problem in, in the world. Only two obstacles, one and two. That is how to get himself satisfied, you know, either through sex or, and, and then his job. That is it. Only two challenges women, men have to deal with on daily basis every morning they wake up. But every morning a woman wakes up, see all the challenges she has to deal with. Her life is already automatically full of so many challenges and so many problems. And so for you now to be coming to a woman and be telling her, oh, you, do, you don't cook well, or you, you, are, you, are, you are fat, or you are adding weight, or you are a, good, a bad mother, or you are not taking care of your children. You, a woman doesn't need any more negative in her life. A woman doesn't need any more negative comments. A woman doesn't need any more problems. She's already having a lot, a, in, a, enough problems of her own. She's already having too much negative things on her own. Even if everything seems to be okay in her own eyes, a woman has a way of, you know, getting them complicated. She's having so many challenges, so many thoughts that she has to deal with on a regular basis. Uh, Nena says, women are struggling with so many issues of life, such as emotional Emotions, hormones, family, career, food, laundry. It is a, yeah, please, men, help us not to add more to us so that we serve you better. Which is true. Uh, talking about losing weight again, Mkiru says, yes, even when I know exactly how I look and come to my husband and he says, baby, do I need, and I come to my husband and tell him, do I need to lose weight? I'm expecting to hear, you look fabulous, honey, but deep inside, I know I need to lose some kilograms. <laughs> Another lady says, oh, Monica, I'm on diet now for almost two months, so I don't want you to tell me anything. <laughs> okay, people are surprised to see the shame and the ball in the, in the, on the obstacle in the, in the leg of the woman. Yes, that is how life is for the woman. Doris Shogbe said, Good morning, Pastor. God bless you richly for your devotion towards mankind. I was so down this morning because of all these issues you are talking about. You see, a woman wakes up already with problems, but men don't wake up with problems. The only problem a man could wake up with is with his work. And uh, maybe school fees for the children or something. He, he just wakes up. He's, he's just okay. He doesn't have anything weighing him down. We don't even know what that means. But that's what Doris is saying. She wakes up already with problems. And then you are still bringing more problems. No, that's not good. So she said, I woke up with so many, so many of these, pressed down with so many of these issues you are talking about. But listening to you has brought me joy. God bless you. You see, thank God. Marble is saying, yes, Dr. Adelaja. We need the men to give us compliment. That will help our day, right? 
Darlene says women don't need men to talk them down and negativity. Emmanuel Okoji said, what is the balance between the ego of man and him being spirit-filled? <laughs> the spirit-filled is okay, but apart from a man that is spirit-filled, a man still has that ego. That ego is not always negative. That ego is what drives him. It's what makes him to pursue and to strive for, for success and progress in his life. So, uh, you know, it's part of his soul. And part of his, his, his body as well. And ego is necessary. So he could be offended too. He could be hurt. And uh, it doesn't matter if he's spirit-filled or he's not spirit-filled. Every man has the ego. So you cannot say because he's spirit-filled, he shouldn't have ego. Or he doesn't have ego. Or it is wrong for him to have ego because he's a, he's a, man, he's a man of God or he's a believer. He shouldn't have it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Uh, <laughs> still talking about the weight. Obi says, sometimes my wife maintains she has added some weight. Then I tell her that I'm lucky because I have more to hold and touch. Yes, I just have to keep her positive. That is so true. Theodore says, men are also cautious of their weight and make it their goal to reduce pot belly. <laughs> Yetunde said, even when there is a family problem, the woman carries more of the burden than the man does naturally. Why is that, Dr. Dillager? The woman keeps going around the clock for solution while the men just sit there. Because the, men, the woman, because of what the photograph I've always shown you, I kept on showing you, and I'm going to show you again, the women feel the pain more, and so they need the security more. They need the stability more. You remember this photograph? That is the man. That is the man here. You know that. So he, everything that is happening in the physical, is using his eyes to see it. He's seeing what is happening, but it's not affecting his emotions. It's not affecting his mind. Or if, if he could affect it, if if he decides to, he allows it. He gives room for thoughts to come, but it doesn't automatically affect him. Whatever is going on in the physical, but the woman. Anything that is happening in the physical world, in the family, is affecting our spirit, soul, body, emotions, feelings, uh, mind, heart. Is everything is wrapped up? Is affecting her? Is she cannot live when she cannot live in peace? But the man can live in peace because whatever is happening in her mind is not happening to her heart or to, to his heart or to his emotions or to his body. You know, everything is separated. So a man can be having problems and not be so bothered. But when a woman is having any problem, it's affecting her in every segment of her body and her life. So she's troubled. She cannot sleep. She cannot live, no, peacefully as long as there is any problem in the family. That's why she will do everything possible to get that problem resolved. And she will run Eta Skeeter until she gets the problem resolved. But he... He knows if there is a problem. He knows it's, you know, things are difficult, but he's not, he can live even with that problem. So, yet today, I hope I answer your question. And the reason why men are built like that is for them not to, is for them not to lose control when there are, there are problems, for them to still be in charge. God separated all those things in the man so that the man could still be able to function despite what is happening around. For example, if there is war, so that the man could still be able to go and do what he needs to do. So that if there is any problem, somebody died or any crisis, so that the man could still be able to go and manage and run about and do what he needs to do. But if he had been taken over emotionally, you know, just like the woman, 
Then the woman will be crying, the man will be crying, everybody is messed up, and the whole world will not function. The world will not function. It's going to be difficult. So that's why God created us differently, so that we'll be able to, uh, you know, be there for each other, and so that the man will keep on managing the business and keep the world running well, when things are going um, out of order. Gladys says, okay, she woke up this morning and her plans are already filled up. Her day is already filled up since, till 6 p.m. Even though she just woke up, you know, she's already so filled with so many challenges, so many problems she needs to solve. And that's what I'm saying, that women are already loaded with so many problems that men don't even have an idea of. And men are just making money, and yet men are thinking that they are the ones who are having problems. Men are thinking that the women are the ones giving them headache, that they are having so much problems. But in the real sense, it is the women that are full of problems on a daily basis. And they are the ones who, who have so many problems that, who, that, that uh, men cannot even begin to imagine. Even if a woman is, uh, is a housewife, even sitting at home, she has more problems to deal with than a man that is going to work. And, it, you know, most men would never believe this. They would say, ah, what is she doing at home? She's doing nothing now. But women have issues on a daily basis. And let me show that, I want to show that, uh, you know, that photograph again, because, you know, I just feel that, you know, you put, most people can't believe it how complicated the life of the woman are. And we men need to know this. Even if she's not working, and that's why I will say this, if you are having, if I, I think that, I personally think that a man should do everything possible to make sure that the wife is not working. Or to, to make sure that even if she works, she's only working, doing what she wants to do um, she's only doing what she likes to do as a, a hobby or as a relief, but not because she needs to go and get a job or she needs to work because she's already full of so many issues. And, and, uh, somebody said, even when, even, even, but if, you know, that when, you know, let me say this, sometimes the world has changed. Even when a woman is at home, like I said, She's having so much to do and so much to deal with. Okay, this one symbolizes emotions and the internal struggles, the hormones, hormonal change, the emotions, the mens you know, the menstruations, the blood, the all the things she needs to deal with on her own that man doesn't even have an idea of. Then it goes to the house, or the, the cleaning, the cooking, the making of the home, the, the children, then the uh, family, then the husband, all kind of obstacles that we are not even thinking about that a woman needs to deal with. Now, can you imagine if she adds to all this, she adds a job to this, that she needs to be going to work as well. You know, that is just ruining the life of a woman. Then she comes from the job, the husband wants her to sleep. The husband wants her to, to, to have sex. That's why the woman is always saying she's tired. She doesn't have time for sex. She doesn't have time for any intimacy because she's already tired. So, you know, and then the husband comes home. The husband is not helping with the homework and all that because he's saying he's tired too. But the problem is that it's no more, if, if it, it would have been okay if the woman is not working, we could say, okay, you are tired and you are watching television or you are doing computer or you are doing other things because you are tired from work. But what happens when the two of you are going to work? So if the two of you are going to work, it means that the woman, the man now must begin to learn to help at home. So either a woman now, a man now has to begin to help to do some home work and home shows, house shows, or if the man should make enough, the man should make enough money to help provide help for the woman to resolve at least the home problems. To resolve at least the home 
problems. So the woman, the man should make money, should make money so that the woman will have a housemaid or a gardener or somebody, a cleaner, or just somebody who is able to assist her to resolve all these problems that are in front of her. But I also want to say, no matter what help you get for the woman, she is still having so many other problems that she has to deal with, apart from, even if she has a maid, even if she has a gardener, even if she has a driver, she still has so many other issues she has to deal with that men don't even have an idea about. So, but if she's working, she's working and he's working and she still has to do all this, can you imagine the kind of hell a woman is going through? A woman is going through hell if she has to go to work and, you know, then she has to be a mother and she has to be a woman and she has to be at home. So we don't even know how much struggle, how much problem a woman is going with, uh, go, going, going, through, going through and dealing with on a daily basis. Shioma is saying women are really complicated. I had to make a choice between five clothes to decide on what to wear this morning for a trip. <laughs> and men don't even know they have so, so many problems in this world. Timothy is saying women are complicated emotionally. Uh, men should help to encourage them and not to put salt in their injury. Yeah, well, you know, it's not just about them being complicated emotionally. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's what we must know and understand. This is what is happening, to, you know, this is what uh, Shioma is talking about. Like a simple question like this, this is so simple for the man to pack or to, to go out and just dress, pack everything in one day or in five minutes. In one hour, he packs his bag and he's ready to go. But a woman has started packing her things for a week and she has not been able to pack everything. She, she still, does, she still you, even when she's sleeping, she's thinking about what she has forgotten to put in the bag. <laughs> You know, so a woman is having such a complicated life that we don't even have an understanding. We men don't even have an understanding of what she's going through. Okay. Uh, here, this is the whole list of what she's thinking about that she must take. This is how she's thinking. She's even thinking and getting worried about how to pack the things. Here is these are the things that the children must be doing when she's gone and how the school work of the children and the children's activity. She's thinking about all these things. But the man is not thinking about the children. He's not thinking about the stage, the packing of the things. He's not thinking about the list. Uh, the woman is also worried about what, when she's sleeping, she's worried about what she has forgotten. The man is not, he just, he's not worried about anything. He, he just knows what to take. Then she's worried about if this bag will fit everything or she needs the second bag. Then she's worried about all the random items and the little, little things she needs. So, but the men don't even know women struggle with these things. But it's not just about thinking about it that is the problem, but the trouble, the, the concern that goes along with it. When she's thinking about it, she's also concerned about them. And it's also weighing her down emotionally. So it's not just about thinking that she must take it or she will not take it. But emotionally, it's weighing her down. It's just like this now, for example. <laughs> like this photograph here. So this is a woman waking up in the morning. She woke up, they woke up at the same time. Oh, it's 7 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in the morning woke up. By 7.10 or 7.30, he's already ready to go out. See him, he's already going out of the house in, in 30 minutes. He's, he's done everything he needs to do and his dress has gone out. Now, see, the woman from 7 o'clock 
only got ready at not 7 30 or 9 30, two and a half later, hours later. You see, sometimes she's she she has to take care of herself, then she has to contemplate a lot of things, she has to think. So the emotional pressure on the woman just to think, oh, what did I forget? Oh, what did I didn't take? Or oh, what would be look better? We see her thinking. She has to do a lot of thinking. She's not just about dressing for, it's not just about going to the restroom or dressing for her. She has a lot of a, a emotional pressure to deal with. She has to think about, the, you know, how will she look to the work people? How will she look in the transport? How will she look to her friends? Where she's going to after work? All those things. So those emotional pressure are the things that make her late. And we men are thinking that the things that make her late are just the makeup and the things that she's doing. No, it's more the emotional pressure that is connected to the decisions that make her takes all that long time. So, you know, the emotional burden in a woman is already so overwhelming that men just need to support their wives. Men just need to support the women. So, so it, is, uh, it is normal that men support all the need and give all the support that is needed. Okay, here we come. Some men, some men are concerned that I'm only talking about women. But I think I'm talking about women to the men so that you men could understand your woman better. You know, if your woman is not happy, then you are not happy. I tell you that one. Obi says, women are complex indeed. When we plan to travel, my wife can bring out everything in the wardrobe. <laughs> Before she decides on what to pack. Many hours later, she tells you the wardrobe is full, but nothing to wear. She just can't decide. <laughs> Nena, she says, Pastor, you have... My true mentor. This illustration is what I witness every day. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Ekun Sami says, uh, I will catch up later. Okay. Obi, uh, uh, Obi says, Woman, uh, no, Obi now says, I think this is why they are wife. No, I don't understand that. Yeah, well, now another thing, that, another difference between men and women is that men want everything here and now, especially sex. Men want everything in the here and now. They want everything now. Women want to win now in business. They want to get what they need now. Uh, they want to receive their desires right away. So, uh, it's, it's, it's important for the, for the women to try to understand this nature of men. Uh, men want to have everything here and now. Like, for example, when it comes to sex in the family, the, 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 the men want it when they want it. Uh, if they are feeling aroused or you know and they and they they want it now it is difficult for the man to be told come in the evening <laughs> or come in the morning or come in the afternoon or come in two hours 
It doesn't work like that for the man. It doesn't work like that for the man. Uh, because, let me show you the, the way it works. Anyway, because the man is separated from this brain, so when the pressure, sexual pressure is coming to him, it's coming to his body. And for him to be able, that pressure is going on in his body. For him to be able to stop it, he needs to be able to go to the mind to stop it. Let me show you the photograph of what is happening. Why the man wants it now and now and not later. <laughs> oh, now, wow. <laughs> Okay, with the man, this is the man here. So, this is his body. And sexual pressure is coming to his body, right? So, for him to stop it, because he's feeling the pressure here that he needs sex. For him to stop that feeling, he has to either switch to the mind and get his mind to begin to think of something else or do something else. That is That, that takes some time. That, that is a lot of stress for him to be to overcome to be able to uh, shift the pressure from his body to his mind so when he wants sex he wants it now it's very difficult for him to switch but for the woman if she, even if she wants sex it's easier for her to quickly go and think about something else because they are all connected with her so she might have sex now she, if she just thinks one wrong word could make a woman not to have the sex again or one, she just makes things of something else, and then the desire for sex just stop because she can easily sh uh, uh, shift from you know one from what is happening in her body to what's happening in her mind. Everything is so connected, so it is easier for the woman to control uh, that sexual urge or to suspend that thing that you know that pressure that she's having, you know, she could have more patience and she could have a delayed uh, response or delayed uh, gratification than the, than the man. But the, but the man, but the, but the man is difficult for him. Okay, Theodore is asking, so pastor, is the right conclusion you are making that a woman's emotional problems are enough, full-time job and problem that they need not go to work and not have domestic chores? No, it's, I'm not saying the uh, emotional problems are enough for her not to work. Emotional problems, I'm not even talking about that one. If you look at the picture, Emotional problems are just the thing in her leg, the, the weight that are tied to her legs. She has more problems, apart from emotional problems, she has much more problems outside of her. And it, your own problem, a woman, if you are married, she is more worried about your problems than you are worried about your problems. She is more worried about your family problem than you are more worried about your family problems. So a problem she is having is not just emotional problems. So don't just say it's women problems. No, it's the family problem. She's more worried and more concerned about the family in general and the family issues and problems than the man. So if I say that try to provide for your wife so that she doesn't go to work, it's not just because of her emotions or because of her hormones or because of her menstruation or things like that. It's just because, you know, she is naturally more concerned about everything that's going on in the family she has more responsibility. She has more you know, sensitivity to whatever challenges your family is going through than you are having. You don't worry. You don't care about the problem. Let me show you another, another photograph here. Any problem that happens in the family, let me show you how a man re responds to it and how a woman responds to it. Okay, let's, this is a news that just came in, and information just came in. The same information came in for the woman and for the man. 
the same information came in. Information came in, there's a problem in the family. There's a problem in the family, information came in here, information came here. Uh, yeah, this is the woman mind. This is the woman mind. So she just got the information that there's a problem in the family. Look what is happening to her. Look what is happening to her. She, that little information that came in is creating a shame reaction. Complicated shame reaction of many other things that she's thinking about at the same time. This is the mind, mind of the woman. Same information was received by the man. Oh, and see, the man is only taking the information as a fact and want to, want to. Just two steps. So, the same information that a man is dealing with, easy. Not even worried. Just information, okay, and what to do with it. See what is happening to the woman, to the mind of the woman. She's connecting that to so many and other issues. So many, 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 many problems. So many things that are connected to that little information that came in. So when I say that a woman needs to be protected, when I say that a woman does not really, if you as a man can provide for your wife, for her not to be worried about work, for her not to be worried about going to make money for the family, and if you could take care of that, it's better for her emotional stability. It's not just about her emotional problem. It's because she's built in such a way that she, is, she needs more stability. She needs more protection. She needs more security. Because she is built in a way that everything is connected. One thing is connected to the, to the other. So she's more worried, more concerned, even about what your own problems are. If a child or the children are having problems, a man just receives that as an information in his head. But the woman is the one that is running about, that is worried, that is concerned about that. Because all that is connected to her emotions, to her feelings, and to everything. So everything a man needs to do to, 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 to set the woman free from excessive luggage and excessive problems is, must be done. So if you can afford to set her free from any extra weight, any extra work, it's better for her. So if you could get her a driver, get her a driver. If you, get her, if you could get her a maid, get her a maid. If you could get her some house help, get her a house help. If you could get her some extra money, get her extra money. If you could, any help that you need, to, you can provide for the woman, provide for her. So that she would not need to go through all the process. Even the same problem, see. These are the same problems here. See the way the man is dealing with it. It's nothing for the man. But see the way the woman is dealing with it. It's a big stress and a big challenge for the woman. She has, she has to deal with so many issues concerning the same problem, the same challenge that came to them. <laughs> now, wow. Eukarya says that is the main reason why we have more women struggling with mental problems, especially depression. Curtis Anthony says everything relates back to individuals' basic needs being met across the board. Yes. Curtis says I will send you some data statistics. Thank you. Glow almost said, this is very true. When a woman will rush to the toilet straight when there is a problem, but men are just there doing nothing. <laughs> wow, Sharis Ngoya has written a big note. Pastor, many women have taught themselves to go beyond their actual nature and have become tough enough to deal with the raw truth. At least this is what they think. It is, however, not deniable that those truths that they, they are entering, they are sub, they, that those, it, is, it is not deniable that those truths that they seek are entering their subconscious mind and are causing them to believe certain things about themselves. 
that may not actually be the reality. We women magnify whatever is, go is given to us. So even one small comment will become a huge elephant in our minds. If you are used to be told that you ought to lose weight or change something about yourself, no matter if in regards to your character or your body, you will have difficulty accepting yourself the way you are and appreciate your beauty and the nature of God has created in you. And, uh, and it will become more difficult for you to accept genuine compliment because you are not used to them. And this can have a negative effect on your relationships. And I mean not just romantic relationship, but your social environment in general. It has a long-term negative effect to be told such things, even if it is just sometimes. Now, in the short term, it may appear like it is just the truth. That is why I think many women will say that they cannot identify with themselves with what you are saying. It is also important to note that these are the tendencies of the woman based on their nature. Naturally, with some women, it is more apparent than with others, depending on how they grew up and depending on what their worldview has been. But the nature of and those tendencies apply to all women equally. And these are not weaknesses, but they are our nature. And both men and women should make an effort to understand and embrace it, rather than suppress it. It is a beautiful thing to be a woman. We are blessed with so many details, both inwardly and outwardly. What a wonderful representation of the well-detailed, creative, and wise God Almighty himself. How could we not be proud of ourselves in that sense? Beautiful, beautiful. Apostle Timothy said, Whatever my wife and I are discussing, she al she is always, in my opinion, dis disgracing from the cross of the matter to other things. Now I know why. <laughs> Caroline Shoronke, even women who are financially secure look for men who provide other types of security that put her mind at it. They, yes, even a woman, when she's financially secured herself, she still look up to men to give her some other kind of security. Yes, because she needs to have her mind in peace. Euquaria says, women carry the burden of everybody and oftentimes even forget about herself. Yep. T.Y. says, as a single parent, we don't even have the luxury of all of this. Then, then God, the multifaceted nature of God, a lover, husband, father, Thank you for teaching us about ourselves. It makes me appreciate God the more. What an amazing God we serve. Uh, team, Apostle Tim said, women are carrying a lot of loads that men obviously by this analysis. So they need to be helped. Men help, help our women. It is not just by this analysis. She is, it's not just me saying that. She is carrying more loads. Only women have never been told that. Only women don't know that, that women are carrying more load, but they definitely carry more load. We, we, we need to be told. We've not been told that because women are always, men are always thinking that they are the ones carrying more load. Uh, we always think that we are the ones having more problems because we are going to work. So men are always thinking about their work and they are thinking that, oh, we have so many problems to deal with at work, to deal with at work, and that is a problem. But that is no problem compared to the, to the challenges and the problems that the women are passing through. Women are passing through much more complex situations on a daily basis. Much more complex situations on a daily basis.
Akin Sugar say, what about manipulative tendencies in women? A certain control, wanting to be everywhere, controlling what happens at home, at our work, at our husband's business and all that. Okay, what we call control and the controlling tendencies of a woman is actually our concerns. It's because the woman is concerned about those things <clears throat> and not, most of the time she's troubled about those things. And it is because of her concerns and her troubled, anything she's worried about, she's worrying inside. Now, the women that we say are controlling, that they want to know about what is happening, she, they are putting their nose in everything, the reason why they do that is because they are the kind of women that voice out those things. They voice out the, the challenges, they voice out the, the, the problem that they are facing. But other women are also feeling that. Only they might not be voicing that out. They might not be you know, mentioning what they are feeling. But really they are feeling the same thing. They are going through the same challenge. The same challenges. Only some women are vocal about it. And they let you know what... Uh, they let you know what they are feeling. And they want to find out what is troubling them. For example, if a woman is feeling the pressure no that she's concerned about uh the pressure i mean she's concerned about what's going no your work and she's feeling that there are some concerns at your work at your business and that's why no most women will be quiet about it or just ask you how you are doing what is happening at work but if she's really concerned and she feels she could do something about it she is a way of trying to come and help a woman that is always asking about your work or she wants to interfere with the business is because out of our love for you is out of our concern for you because that's what she would have liked for you to do when she is going through any situation too she wants you to come in and help her and be there for her so she's trying to be there for you she's trying to be there for you she's trying to find out so we call it control but it's actually our worries that she's trying to come in and bring her help and contribution so so we shouldn't look at a woman as somebody that wants to just put her nose in everything and just walk and, and, and create problem and control the man is she's not thinking about control she's thinking about concerns so she's only coming to you know, do something about what she's concerned about. So look at a woman as somebody who is trying to express her love, somebody who is trying to help her husband, somebody who is planning the best for her husband, somebody who is trying to, you know, support her husband because she is thinking that you are not seeing what she's seeing. And it's true, you are not seeing a lot of the things that she is seeing. Like yesterday, I showed you the photograph that it is true that men are not seeing a lot of the things that the women are seeing. Let me show you that photograph again. In this photograph, you see that the men are seeing some things. You see, the men are seeing something, but the men are leaving out a lot of things too, see? All this to the woman is just to the man is just one. The men are not seeing a lot of other things, but see how many things the women are seeing. We are only seeing one here, but see how many other things the woman is seeing. We are only seeing one thing. We make all this to become one. We make all this to be one. 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 All these are just one. All this is just one. But she is seeing between the lines. She is seeing so many other things that we are not seeing. So when you say she is putting her nose everywhere, it is because of what she is seeing. When you say she is putting her nose everywhere, it, it, it is because of what she is seeing. She is seeing more than you are seeing. And she is trying to help you. She is trying to you know, pay your attention to some of the things you are not seeing. Mabel said, that is so true, Pastor. Omotosha said, women are multiplier effects to our lives. Uh, give her money, she will prevent you from mourning. 
Martin's uh, Kwazema said, it gives me a better understanding of what I observe here in Finland, where I live. It has always been noted as the best country to be a woman and that with the best rate of equality in the world. Women here take charge and sometimes it is a bit difficult to physically differentiate a man and a woman. Really strong and active and effect efficient in all they do. I must agree. However, most have given up on marriage and, having, on, and on having kids. Many have decided they will not get married. Some have been divorced several times. I see this is a case of our already saturated personality due to the design of the society. And they just have to live in this almost utopia society while suffering silently. Martins, you are so right. It is not the job of a woman to become like a man. It is not the calling of a woman to become the same thing as a man. So even though the Scandinavians are bragging themselves and prouding themselves in the fact that women are the same as men and they are doing the same thing, they are handling the same situation, but it is not natural. It is against the nature of the woman. And that is why they cannot give birth anymore. And that is why gay is gay equality is uh you know homosexuality and lesbianism is widespread in those societies because it is not the nature of women to be doing all those things the nature of women is to be the homekeeper and to be the mother and a wife and a and a calling to fulfill a calling and to be to be nice the nature of woman is to be tender to be kind to be soft and to be taken care of it's not the nature of woman to be competing with man, to be trying to be strong. Feminism, I understand feminism. The reason for feminism is because they want, they want to, the women want to get rid of discrimination against the woman. But it doesn't mean that they still don't need the care. It doesn't mean that they still don't need the love. It doesn't mean that they still don't need the tenderness. They need that tenderness. And what is happening in Scandinavia is horrible. And, and uh, in, in Finland and all those countries. It's not that the women cannot do them, they can do them, but it's going against their nature and it's making them more unhappy. If a machine do said, oh yes, that is very true, sir. Comfy here said, thanks again, Pastor Sunday, for the powerful teaching. God bless you. You make use of, you make use to understand us. You make us to understand ourselves. Okay. Pam Dyla said, women try, I mean, women worry too much. Therefore, try and structure things. Bosse Dyer said, thanks. I now understand why some men act as if they don't care. And a lot of marriages have been dissolved because of lack of knowledge. It's not that they don't care. They're just different. They just don't know. They don't know a lot of things. Omoto Shaw is a woman are prevented from excuses, so don't let us squeeze them. Beating a woman is beating our mothers. <laughs> Favor Emmanuel, what is true? That is true, sir, that the woman is only trying to help out because of anything. If anything goes wrong in the business or in the family tomorrow, the woman will be the one to answer for it. Yeah, even if she's not the one to answer for it, she will be at the receiving end. Because if the business collapses, then they will not be able to call, pro provide for the family. The, the man will not be able to take care of the children. Then they will be in debt. And the woman's stability will be affected. 
and the, the woman will not be able to take care of her needs and her children needs and her family needs. So because the woman is concerned for the consequences of the debt that the man will get into, of the loans, of the economic problems or the financial problems, and if the business collapses or the friends are evil, and she is seeing a lot of dangers that might, that might come and the man is not seeing it. That is why God told Abraham that, he should listen to the wife. Sometimes we need to listen. We should need to learn to listen to our wives. Tim uh, Dutton says the weight of women problem is far higher than that of men. So they are specially configured as womb, womb man to be able to carry many things in a womb. I celebrate this potential in a woman. Man, you don't have womb to carry pregnancy and other stuff. So. Do appreciate and celebrate your woman. Thank you. T.Y. says, Martins, you are so astute. This is actually the same thing happening everywhere else. Silently, women are suffering, like in Finland. Women are suffering silently, even made more complicated by the religion, by religion and so-called expectations of the society on a woman. It's, yeah. Ufuma said, I have always told my friends who marry and are taking on the role of man that it is against their nature and they will soon crumble. No matter how wealthy a woman is in providing, she still needs a man to be a man. Very soon, because she is not designed to be the provider, she will kick you out and leave you for another. It is truly frustrating for a woman to try to be a man. Those that do that are just wearing a mask. Thanks so much, sir, for this message. Austin Mills says, oh, wow, prophet. God bless you, Pastor Sunday Adelaja, my friend. You were so surprised when we spoke three days ago, and I told you that I do follow you live. Yeah, now I'm seeing that you follow me. <laughs> In fact, though I have never made comment or contributions of any kind, now I'm seeing it. <laughs> Men are she. Men, please learn to listen to your wives. It shall all end in praise because she sees more. That is so true. That is so true. And uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you have shared the link. Let's go ahead and share the link to this program. Uh, there is a share button under the video. Go look for the share button. Let's go and share the message. I think both men and women need to listen to this message. We need to share this message so that uh, uh, we'll be able to help uh, our, our families, we'll be able to help our spouses and our children. We'll be able to give it to our children. So if you press the share button, write some comments as well so that uh, the message will go around to your timeline and your friends will be able to watch it and even your children. We need to teach these things to our children sometimes. They also need to know about these things. Uh, so nice being with you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, see you tonight. I'll be back tonight. God bless you, everybody. Bye.